My name is Rick Ross and uh, I've been a director at the Courtney District Museum for the last five or six years. And my main interest is the paleo side of it. So that's where I'm, uh, I'm at my best is uh, digging up fossils and uh, trying to get them identified. My first big find was when they were doing the highway construction just north of Courtney. They were putting in the new highway going to Campbell River and uh, they were blasting and exposing a lot of the uh, formation that was called the Pender Formation which is a Cretaceous formation of uh, shale and sandstone. And in that are concretions, and when you crack open the concretions, you find fossils. So uh, we were working on that all through the summer of 1999. And uh, we would go there after work every day, and we'd go through what they'd blasted and look for concretions and ammonites and all sorts of fun things, shark's teeth. And One Sunday, I was there by myself. I usually went with a couple of friends, and we'd you know, spend the, the evening there. But this Sunday, I was all by myself, and I was in amongst all these gigantic boulders of sandstone and sticking out of one of them was a concretion and I just gave it a whack with my hammer and exposed was a tooth about that big. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. So I went to the fellow that was doing maintenance on one of the machines and I said, you know, we really need to get this block out of here. And he said, oh no, all that's going into the roadbed tomorrow. It's all going to be bulldozed into the roadbed. I said, oh, I got to talk to the manager. <laughs> so he gave me the manager's number and I phoned him. And he said, well, if you can have a truck there at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, we'll try and pick it up and put it on the truck. But it better be a big truck. So I phoned around all my, first I phoned the museum, I talked to Pat Trask. I also phoned a good friend of mine whose brother happened to have a three-ton flatbed truck. And they agreed to go, I had to go to work, so I couldn't be there. So they, went, they all went out there and they had a chain, they put a chain through one of the drill holes in this gigantic three-ton block, picked it up and put it on the back of my friend's brother's truck and drove it into Courtney into the museum and then they had the forklift from Central Builders come up and lift it up onto the back of the museum and it sat there for quite a few years before it could be prepped out and eventually it was sent to a company in Seattle that does a lot of preparatory work and uh, once it was prepped out it was uh, the bottom jaws the two chunks of the bottom jaws from a very large mosasaur which now has been identified as a Tylosaurus and uh, so I think that's the first record of Tylosaurus on Vancouver Island. They have to take a small pneumatic pen and take away all the rock from around the bones. And uh, it, 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 I mean, I have uh, a little uh, uh, prep room of my own, so I know what it takes. It takes hours and hours and hours to work on something that big. I usually work on ammonites and things that I can do in a couple of hours, maybe five hours is the maximum I put into something. But this took the fellow, I would say, maybe 300 hours and he exposed it beautifully all the teeth are exposed and when they were doing that they found these weird little plates and he thought they were crabs he said oh I found these little crab carapaces but they're actually they're actually bony plates that were in the eye of these marine reptiles and actually birds have these same little bony plates in their eyes and uh, and and dinosaurs had them and most reptiles have them and in in the mosasaur it was so they could dive to deeper depths without popping their eyeball, right? Yeah, so they had these plates in there. They're called sclerotic, it's called a sclerotic ring around their eye. And these were the plates, and the plates were uh, probably about that big. So you can imagine the size of the eye. It had about seven or eight of these going around its, the inside of its eye. It was a big eye. A lot of people, when they hear saurus, they think it's a dinosaur, but it's not. It's a marine reptile. And it's most closely related to the Komodo dragons that live down in Indonesia, the largest living uh, reptile and uh, these were ocean going reptiles they swam much the way killer whales do today and probably about the size probably bigger than a killer whale probably closer to a whale a large whale a in size and uh, had massive jaws and they just ate everything they came across it's the only tylosaurus that's been found here we found other mosasaurs uh, another fellow had found a smaller mosasaur that was uh, that was named uh, Carisodon. Carisodon Puntlagensis. So it was found on the Puntledge River and its uh, genus name is Carisodon uh, and uh, that's on display in the museum as well, as well as Mike Trask's big plesiosaur. The plesiosaurs were also marine reptiles but they had long necks and small heads for most part, whereas the mosasaurs were more massive. They were more like a, a giant crocodile with a, a big set of teeth in the front, right? There's still some intriguing pieces in that block. There could be more in the same block, and definitely there's more under the roadbed. Every time I drive that highway, I think of what's under that roadbed. 